Let's take a look at math, grade four, module three, lesson four, multi-digit multiplication and division, topic B, multiplication by 10, 100, and 1,000. Problem one, draw a number disk to represent products when multiplying by a one-digit number. Okay, we're gonna start with multiplying three ones times 10. Three ones. That's an unusual way to write when you think about ones. Normally, we just would put three times ten. But we want we want all students to be able to see that three ones is unit form. It means we're counting ones. And I'm going to show you just a few other examples of different kinds of units that we could use. It could be three hats we're counting. Or it could be three feet. Maybe three miles. Three pints. Think about fractions. It could be three-fifths. Time, three hours, three minutes. Decimals. We could be talking about decimals, and it could be three-tenths. But in this case, we're talking about three ones. Okay. So, for this, I'm going to represent three ones with disks. And these are going to be the little disks that I use. So this is one disk in the ones place, two, three. So this is three ones. Now if I'm going to multiply this three ones times ten, this whole group of three ones is going to shift into the tens column. So then my group of three ones becomes a group of three tens because I multiply by ten. So three tens is thirty. Let's say I wanted to multiply instead of three ones times ten. I'm going to switch that one out. Let's say I wanted to multiply three ones times ten times ten. Well, I have three ones that I multiplied times ten. That's the first part. Now I'm just going to multiply times ten again. So then I will need to put three ones in the hundreds column. So this group of three ones was multiplied by 10 and became 30 and then 30 was multiplied by 10 and became 3 hundredths. We want students to see that when they multiply a number by 10 that it shifts to the left into the tens column. When they multiply a 10 by 10 it shifts to the left into the hundreds column. But Let's think about something. What is 10 times 10? 10 times 10 is 100. So if I were to multiply 3 times 100, what I'm really multiplying is 3 times 10 times 10. So let's see how that would work. I'm going to represent my three ones in the ones column. <coughs> Then I'm going to multiply by 100. So instead of multiplying and moving these three ones into the tens column, which is what I would do if I was multiplying by 10, since I'm multiplying by 100, I'm going to move them twice. I'm going to move them into the hundreds column. So three ones times 100 the three ones shift two times to the left into the hundreds column. Three ones times ten times ten times ten.
off in the same way that it did before. I'm going to set up a group of three ones and I'm going to multiply it by 10. So my three ones are going to end up in here. Then I'm going to multiply that by 10. So I'm going to have my three ones end up over here. Then I'm going to multiply by 10 again. Each time I multiply this three ones by 10, the three ones shift into shift towards the left into the next place value column. So instead of having three ones, I multiply by 10 and I have three tens, which is 30. If I multiply those three tens by 10, I have three hundreds which is 300 and then if I multiply the 300 by 10 I would get 3000 but let's take a look at this we said before that 10 times 10 is a hundred a hundred times 10 is a thousand so if I were to multiply three ones times 1000 I would represent my ones with the dots and then I would multiply those three ones by a thousand. So this time the three ones will shift three places to the left. Three ones times one thousand is three thousands. Let's try another one. Problem two. Draw number disk to represent products when multiplying by a two digit number. This time we're going to multiply fifteen times ten. To represent fifteen on our place value chart, what I would need would be one ten and five ones. Now I'm representing fifteen. If I multiply by ten, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to multiply the number that's in the tens place by ten, and I'm going to multiply the five ones by ten. So I will get one in the hundreds place, one number in the hundreds place, and I'm going to get five discs in the tens place. So before my number was 15. And I'm going to draw a little line here so you can see that this was the number I had to begin with. I multiplied it by 10 and now this is the number that I have. I have 105 tens. 5 tens is 50. So I have 150 as my number. I'm going to represent 22 by showing two ones and two tens. Now I'm going to multiply this by 10. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw like a little line in here to help show you that, okay, I'm multiplying this and my answer is going to end up here. So I multiply the two ones by ten and I get two tens. Now I'm going to multiply the two tens by ten and I'm going to get two hundreds. What I don't want you to get confused with is to think that 
this tin is here and this tin is here. It's so really what I've done is I've multiplied the, this 2 in the 10's place by 10 and this 2 in the 1's place by 10. So the only one, the only 10 I've used so far is this one. Now I'm going to take this line and I'm going to move it down here so that I can show that, okay, now I'm going to multiply these two tens by ten. And they're going to shift over into the hundreds place. And I'm going to multiply, I'm going to kind of move these over just a little bit. I'm going to multiply these two tens, I mean these two hundreds, by ten. So that in the end, what I did was 22 times 10 gave me 2 hundreds and 2 tens. 2 hundreds and 2 tens by 10, multiplied by 10, gave me 2 thousands, 2 hundreds. What did we say about 10 times 10? That 10 times 10 is really 100. So let's think about what would happen if I multiply 22 times 100. I would still represent my 22 the same way. Say, so, okay, I have two tens, and I have two ones. But instead of multiplying the two tens by 10, I'm going to multiply the two tens by 100. And instead of multiplying the two ones by 10, I'm going to multiply those two ones by 100. So, if I'm going to come borrow this line from up here so I can draw it right here. And we can see that when I multiplied 22 times 100, I ended up with 2,000s and 200s, which that answer is 2,200. All right, that's going to wrap things up for lesson four. Um, in this lesson, we were interpreting and representing patterns when multiplying by 10, 100, and 1,000. Remember, you can always get more help if you go to lpssonline.com. You hover over Parent Command Center and scroll down to Math Resources. When you click there, you'll get this page, which you can click any grade level you want. We have resources for every grade level, but if you click on fourth grade, you'll get to our parent newsletters. Right now, we are moved into Module 3, Topic B. So when you click Topic B, you'll get this which can really help you with your work.